It was in 1976, Russ Taff exploded onto the music scene when he became the lead singer of the supergroup The Imperials. After a string of hits with The Imperials, Russ went on to have one of the biggest solo careers in all of Christian music history. But there's a dark side to Russ's fame in music that includes abuse, shame, and a secret struggle with alcoholism. The bright side to Russ's process of recovery was the journey that he walked with his wife, Tori. Russ's story of acceptance, freedom, and love of God is documented in a brand new film, and it's called I Still Believe. Here's a clip of the film. Shame is a prison. Abused as a child, shame told me that it was my fault. Singing for Jesus and living a secret life as an alcoholic, shame whispered, there is no hope. But prison doors were made to be open. Captives can be set free. I'm Russ Taff, and I still believe. And joining us with more about this incredible story, make welcome Russ and Tori Taff. Russ, Tori, great having you guys Thank you. Thank you. You are beloved in this town, but you know what? You're beloved all over America. People oh. have been blessed by your songs, and they never knew what was going on mm. backstage. No. I mean, this is a powerful story, Russ, and, mm. and that you've had the courage to tell it is in of itself, I think, a extraordinary, uh, just candor on your part. Right. I, I, uh, Daddy was a Pentecostal preacher, and... Um, we grew up with a God that didn't like us very much. Mm. And uh, you're just hanging by a thread over hell and at any moment he could let go. Uh, but the, the, the hard thing about that was the constant message. And they were raising me, my mom and dad, the way they were raised is yeah. daily, you're not good enough. You'll never be worth it. Uh, you're not worth the salt that goes on your bread. And it said to you so often that you start believing it. Mm. And, and then all of a sudden you are, uh, uh, brought to Nashville to this huge uh, machine called the Imperials, <laughs> and you win in Grammys, but in your heart, uh, you don't feel worthy. See, it's hard for me to believe that Russ Taff, <laughs> this guy that I have known, not a, you know up close, but at a distance, I mean, I just assume Russ Taff is probably the most together guy I'd ever meet in my life. Because on stage, I mean, you, mm -hmm. you had it all. Mm -hmm. But this was haunting you deep inside. Yeah, it, it, it was. And, and there was so much shame with, with my father. Uh, you know, he was jealous of me growing up. Mm. And so when I would do good, he would be threatened. And, uh, and Mama, uh, when you live in a house of, that, you know, six months he's preaching and the other six months he's drunk and six months he's preaching and you're just getting this yin-yang of a message, but you carry all this into your adult life and you are, uh, you're terrified hmm. and thinking that I'm going to get found out. I don't belong here. I don't, and no matter how many awards you got, it doesn't, if in your heart, you know, you don't feel worthy. We were in New York. There were three Heinekens in the fridge, and I just never drank. Mm. And by the time I had the third one, I, honestly, I was praising God. I can live this way. All these voices are quiet, and I don't, I, you know, I don't hate myself. I, I don't feel like a fraud, uh, and I knew nothing about grace, His mm. grace. Wow. That uh, you know that He was on my side, and I was trying so hard to live the way I should live. But I kept falling up short, and I would have maybe three days sober, and then I'd relapse. And, and, and it just started this cycle of about 10 years of begging God to forgive me, and then relapsing, and, and begging him to forgive me, and crying out for help. Please help me. Did people around you know this was going on? After a while. Yeah. I mean, After that, a while. It, it was not a big secret to the no, intimate I, circle, but certainly not in the, no. in, in the great no. public when you grow up in a home of an alcoholic, you learn how to hide real well yeah. because you watch him. But, you know, God began to bring people into my life that saw what was going on, and I thought for sure they would judge me. I thought yeah. for sure it's over uh, because I built this image of myself that yeah. everybody in Arkansas saw, and, uh, and everybody liked this image. But behind this image was an Auschwitz survivor. Mm. You know, I, I, that, I was not getting any love. That image was. 
But it started, and it started a lot with, with, with her. She began to notice something very, very different. And, uh, and I began to change. You know, Tori, but I look at you and I think, I think you're the hero. You stayed oh, with him. Absolutely. You did. You continued to love him and walk with him. How did you do that? I would love to say it was because I'm like Mother Teresa. <laughs> and I just, I have this. She's not. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> um, I, I, I loved him. Hmm. But, but I also figured out that I could love him and leave if I had to. Yeah. And my vow was never, um, I'm staying no matter what. My vow was, he needs to get well. Mm. If it came to a point in which it was not healthy for me, and if I wasn't able to be part of the recovery, then um, I don't know, our, we, it would have looked, it would have been a different picture. But he worked extremely hard. And there were long periods of sobriety. There were like 10 years at a time. And then something would- My usually, father passed away. His father passed yeah. away. and So then, much between he and I that was never settled. And then there'd be a, a relapse, but it wasn't, it wasn't 30 years of daily addiction. And I didn't see him actually drunk, impaired, until the very last uh, treatment when he was treated mm. for trauma. And the, the violence from his childhood was finally completely dealt with in a very experiential way. And that laid the groundwork for him to be able to come into to who he's always been. You know, I hope people see this film for one reason. They'll need to understand that Christians are not immune from pain, hurt, mm -hmm. shame, guilt, mm -hmm. alcoholism, everything that crushes the human spirit. Right. And you're being able to tell that story. Mm -hmm. I, I think you have no idea how powerful that is gonna be and how liberating that is gonna be for so many people out there. See Russ Taff and I Still Believe. It's a one night only movie. It's gonna be playing in over 700 theaters on Tuesday, October the 30th. Got that? Tuesday, October the 30th, coming up. So to get your tickets for I Still Believe in Your City, go to RussTaffMovie.com. That's RussTaffMovie.com. And please don't miss Russ Taff's new album, Believe. It's available beginning November the 2nd. Music sellers everywhere and at RussTaff.com.